Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. So let's continue our discussion on improper integrals. And in this video, we'll cover the concepts of solving improper integrals when we have one of the limits to be not a real number. So if one of the limits is infinity, we will know the way if one of the limits or if both the limits are infinity or, and minus infinity, we will cover the concepts on how to solve these type of integrals over here. So this video will be divided into two parts. In this video, we'll cover the concept that we used in order to evaluate such type of integrals. And in the next video, we'll actually solve this example using all the concepts that we will cover in this video. So again, you see an example over here. You can clearly see that since we already covered the concepts of identifying when our integral is said to be an improper integral, you can clearly notice that x square plus one cannot be zero, right? So this function, is defined for all real numbers, right? This function one upon one plus x square is defined for all real numbers. So we know that whatever interval that we take, whatever real values that we consider in our interval, it will be, it will give us a proper integral, right? But since in this case, because of the first reason that we covered in the last videos, we have one of the limit, we have our upper limit to be infinity, which is not a real number, right? And since this is the case, then this integral is said to be an improper integral. And the way to solve this is, when you have this type of integral, the only condition is that your integral of fx dx from x equals a to x equals capital R, where capital R is any real number greater than a, if this integral exists for all the values of R, for all the real values of R greater than a, and we're calculating this integral over here, just as in this example, what you do is basically you will calculate the integral of this expression, the integral of fx dx from x equals a to x equals capital R. And after solving this integral over here, then you'll apply the limit R approaches to infinity in this case, right? So if we have to summarize this again, whenever you're calculating a definite integral, which is of the form when one of your limits is infinity, for example, in this case, when your upper limit is infinity, what you do is basically, you have to first check if you do not have any other discontinuity except this infinity value, which means that your fx should be defined for all real values greater than zero, so that you don't have any discontinuity between this point, right? If we have any discontinuity between a and infinity, we'll have to use other methods that we'll cover in the next videos. So if this is the case, that your integral of fx dx from x equals a to x equals capital R is defined for all the real values capital R greater than a. What we do is we calculate this integral and after calculating this integral, since we were supposed to calculate this integral, we take the limit of capital R approaches to infinity and then whatever value we get at the end will be our final answer to this integral over here, right? But now this is one case, right? We also know that we can have two different cases when we have minus infinity or the last case when we have an integral which is from minus infinity to infinity, right? So that is also a case for improper integrals, right? Because both of the limits in this case are not real numbers. So when you have those cases, what you basically do is, for example, in this case, you're calculating the integral from minus infinity to b. Again, you'll have to check if you don't have any discontinuity between this interval so if your integral from small r to b of fx exists, again for all real numbers less than b, because you don't want any discontinuity between this interval over here, right? So again, the same process, what you'll do is basically, you will calculate this fx dx from x equals small r to x equals b, and then again take the limit r approaches to minus infinity, in this case to evaluate this integral over here. And now we can cover the last case as well when both of our limits are not real numbers. So if we are taking the integral of fx dx from minus infinity to infinity, what you do is, again, you'll have to check whether your fx is continuous for all real numbers, exists for all real numbers because you're taking the limit from minus infinity to infinity, right? So you'll have to check for all the real values and see if your function is continuous for all the real values in this case. And if that's the case, what you'll do is you can take any C, you can take any real number, which makes your limit calculations easier. And what you'll do is basically you'll combine both of these concepts that you covered in the first two points, right? So you'll cover these two concepts 
and you'll break this limit. You know that we can break this limit, right? We can break any limit in definite integrals. What we basically are doing is we are first breaking this interval, breaking this integral such that it becomes something like minus infinity to c or fx dx plus integral c to infinity for fx dx in this case, right? And now we can use the concepts that we covered in the first two points to solve this integral over here. Don't worry if that seems complicated. We'll do a couple more examples in order to refine these concepts that will help you better understand how to calculate such type of integrals over here. So that's it for this video. Again, this video was all about knowing the concepts that we use in order to calculate such integrals when we don't have real numbers in our endpoints. And we will use these concepts that we covered in this video. And in the next video, we will solve this integral by using all the concepts that we covered in this video. So stay tuned for that. Feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.